Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> we're back today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. There she is. And we're working on the doors trying to create those hidden hinges. And I don't feel that I got enough done today, so I was actually not going to create a video at all. But I did have the camera running to collect some time lapse, and uh, a couple people told me, hey, even if you have a short video, you probably should just put something up. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. So, anyways, I started cutting out some uh, hinge pockets here on the driver's side, well, passenger side door. I started to do the top one, and as I said, I didn't feel that I was done enough to actually create a video, but we're going to do it anyway. But what I've created here was a pocket where I can actually screw the hinge on into, which is attached or welded to the reinforced part on the inside of the door. There was some pretty heavy steel on the inside of there. It was actually heavier than the gauge that the uh, little box that came with it. And in fact, the box is actually what I put in there. But um, what I'm doing here is I've converted this and I've changed this over because I'm actually going to be putting Lambo doors on here. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> Once again, bullshitting you. The only car that Lamborghini doors ever looked good on was a Lamborghini. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, here's where we're at. I've been working on this sucker down in here, and uh, I cut this out, and I had to cut, well, there was a lot of cutting. There's two layers of steel. There's the outside, which is real thin, and then there's the heavier gauges on the inside behind that. That's what this is welded to. That's why this has strength, and I can attach it too, without having to take these paddles and weld them way up into the door like this. Now, I've got a plan here, and as you notice, there's a little notch taken out of this, and that's because you are actually going to be seeing a little bit of that hinge from inside of the car. I guess that's the best way to demonstrate. It's gonna look something like that. It's not going to affect my door panel fitment, so the door panels will still go in the same way. Uh, really, everything should work, and the way I've got this set up, when I put the piece of metal in here, this is actually the backing plate, but um, when I put the piece of metal in here to, to do it, because this is all slotted, I am able to actually move this around in this area, thus making the door adjustable. If I want to bring it forwards or back, I could just put a little spacer behind it. I've actually made this deep enough that I can put a few pieces of sheet metal behind it and screw it all down tight. So what I'll probably do is take a couple of light pieces of uh, sheet metal, uh, I don't know, something thin, and uh, put them in there just as a couple of shims, and then screw this down tight, and that's where we're going to go with our starting point. Now once the door is attached, I'm going to put some probably wooden shims behind it, clamp everything into place so that way it's straight, then go into the car and weld the hinges into the position they're supposed to be in. And once I've got that far, then I believe this is going to work out. But the idea was here is I wanted to have this, you know, as, as invisible as possible, that it wasn't going to intrude into the passenger cabin as it would have if it was in here, because this is the position approximately that it was going to wind up at. And I think that uh, that would have affected the door card and just, uh, yeah, not a good idea. So anyways, licky, likey, comment, subscribe. I'm going to continue running the process that it took me to, uh, to put this all together as you see it. And I uh, will. I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed with myself that I got the box to work out that well. There's still a little welding that I have to do from the inside here. There's no way I can get a camera in there. But uh, I need to hit around the bottom here and around the top. And then from the outside, I can hit it from the bottom here because those two, two actually three layers, all come together here on the bottom. So I just run a welder across that. So it needs a little more time on that, maybe another hour or so, and then a little bit of grinding, and then just clean it up. And I think this one's done. And I have to repeat the process down here, but because the door is thinner, I'm actually going to have to take this box, which you see is just way too big, and uh, cut it down in the middle here, weld it back together smaller, and put it back into here. It'll look just like this, but it'll be smaller. And uh, that shouldn't be a problem. There's a lot less door reinforcement on the inside here. The reinforcement, I think, ends right about here, so I am going to weld into it, but not as much of it, yeah, not as much as I would have wanted to. You can actually see the weld to it right there, because it, uh, it ends right almost in the middle of this. But it will attach to it, and that's really what's critical to me. Once this is done, however, what I will probably do is uh, take a, a piece of, uh, I think, angle iron would be best, and lay it between these two boxes, kind of in between here, you know, covering this wall, going to the door skin, and weld these two plates together. And that will stop them from you know, wobbling about in any position that they want to go, and they will always be in, in line with each other that way. So anyway, I think that's where we're at here, and uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle bell, and visit my website, duckshit.net, so that way you can see all my different social media links. Thanks for watching, you guys. Really appreciate it. We'll be back in just a few.
Well, anyway, that should just about wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. Please, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Plug that dingle bell that you see down there next to that subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Check out DougShit.net. See all my other website links. That's right. I'm on a bunch of different social media platforms, and sometimes I upload to them and not just to YouTube. So if you'd like to see some behind-the-scenes stuff or see some stuff that um, I'm working on as side projects that haven't made it to video yet, you probably want to check out perhaps my Instagram, and I'm going to start reposting on Twitter again soon, too. So anyways, check out those links up on DougShit.net. Click on there. It'll take you right off to those uh, other social media places. And if I do decide to gain on any more, I'll add them to the website for sure. I'm about to launch my beta website. If you want to see the beta website, check out DougShit.net and look for the beta link. It actually says beta website. Uh, click on that, and you can check it out. Uh, it is functional. It does work. It just It's cosmetically challenged. It isn't as done or as polished as I want it to be. Uh, some of the things are a little hard to read on it yet, and uh, well, for the most part, everything does work. There are some things that aren't finished, but we'll get to that. And one of the things that I will be uploading is a VIN number decoder. You can type in your Beetle VIN number and figure out your Beetle's birthday through an algorithm that I wrote. And I'm going to ask for people to um, send in your birth certificates if you have one, if there's a discrepancy to the birth date of your vehicle. So that way I can polish the algorithm a little bit. But anyway, it's kind of a cool feature that will be appearing up on DuckShit.net soon. So you're going to want to check that out. Thanks as always, guys, for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, licky-likey. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.